In this video, we're going to look at an important relationship about parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines, you may remember from geometry, are lines that go in the same direction and they never will intersect. Now, if they're going to go in the same direction, that means if the blue line here is going to rise 2 and run 5, the green line better do the exact same thing, rise 2 and run 5. So the slope of the blue line is 2 fifths, the slope of the green line is 2 fifths. To go the same direction, they must have the same slope. Parallel lines have the same slope. First thing you need to remember for this video. Perpendicular lines, though, are lines that intersect at a perfect right angle or a 90 degree angle. Not at any old angle, but a perfect 90 degree angle. In that case, if one line, say, goes down 5 and over 2, down 5 and over 2, this blue line we're making up has a slope of negative 5 halves, the green line has to kind of counter out that in the opposite direction. It's going to go up 2 and over 5. The green line has a slope of 2 fifths. Now, you might notice these slopes have a lot in common. You'll notice that they both use the numbers 2 and 5, but they're flipped over. We call those reciprocals, where the fraction is flipped over. You'll also notice that one of these is positive, going uphill, and the other is going downhill. Negative. So we want one positive, one negative. We call that opposite. And flipped fractions, we call that reciprocals. Perpendicular lines, the second important thing you need to know for this video, perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Neither, where they're not parallel or perpendicular, there's really no pattern. Maybe one will have a slope of negative 2 thirds, the other one has a slope of negative 5 fourths. You know, nothing really special about them. Um, there's no pattern. They're not perpendicular, they're not, they're not parallel. We're not really interested in those. So, for example, if we know one line goes through the points 5, 2 and 7, 5, and the other line goes through the point negative 2, 6 and 0, negative 3, we can find out if these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Let's first look at the first set of points. It's important to keep track of which points go together. And we know that's an x-y pair, and we have a first point and a second point. And the way we know if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither is we look at their slopes. So m, the slope, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2, the y from the second point is 5, minus the y from the first point is 2 over x from the second point is 7, minus x from the first point is 5. 5 minus 2 is 3, 7 minus 5 is 2. We have a slope of 3 halves for the first point. We're going to compare it to the second line, which goes through negative 2, negative 6, and 0, negative 3. Again, they come in x, y pairs, and we've got a first point and a second point. Slope is still y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is negative 3 minus y1, which is negative 6, over x2, which is 0, minus x1, which is negative 2. Two negatives make a positive. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. 0 plus 2 is 2. And if we compare our slopes, the first line had a slope of 3 halves. The second line had a slope of 3 halves. They have the same slope, which means the lines must be parallel, which only has one r in it. These lines are parallel because they have the same slope. Let's take a look at another example. 
In this next example, we're looking for a line that goes through the points negative 4, 1 and negative 1, 3. We're going to compare it to a line that goes through 2, negative 1 and 6, negative 7. Again, we're going to calculate their slopes. So m for the slope, y2, x, y pairs, first point and second point. y2 is 3 minus y1, which is 1, over x2, which is negative 1, minus x1, which is negative 4. 3 minus 1 is 2, add the opposite. 1 plus 4 is 3, that's negative 1 plus 4. So we have a slope of 2 thirds on the first line. The second line, 2, negative 1 and 6, negative 7. So m is equal to y2, which is negative 7, minus y1, which is negative 1, over x2, which is 6, minus x1, which is 2. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. Reduce the fraction, we get negative 3 halves. How do these fractions compare? Well, we notice 1 is positive, 1 is negative. They're opposites. 1 is 2 thirds, the other is 3 halves. These are opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite reciprocal means we have perpendicular lines. They're going to meet at a perfect 90 degree angle. Let's try one more example. Our first line goes through 3, 7 and negative 6, negative 8. So finding the slope, y2 is negative 8 minus y1 is 7 over x2 is negative 6 minus 3. Negative 8 minus 7 is negative 15 over negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. Reducing the fraction, Dividing by 3, also two negatives are going to make a positive. We get 5 thirds for the first slope. The second lines go through 5, 2 and negative 5, negative 4. So y2 is negative 4 minus y1 is 2 over x2, which is negative 5 minus x1, which is 5. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10. Two negatives are again going to make a positive. Reducing the fractions, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 10 divided by 2 is 5. We now know the slopes of both lines. How do they compare? Well, you might notice they're reciprocals. Does that mean they're perpendicular? Not quite. Recall perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. One positive, one negative, and these are both positive. This is neither parallel nor perpendicular. So again, the important relationship to remember, same slope is parallel, opposite reciprocal slope is perpendicular.